DC pack, it's just full of energy and enthusiasm and optimism. We really haven't got anything like it back in the United Kingdom. Now, Liz Truss has just been speaking at the main stage here. It's nice to see a fellow Brit uh, appearing uh, at CPAC. And here's a short clip of what she had to say. Now, in Britain, we are one of the few countries that still have a conservative government. But the left did not accept that they'd lost at the ballot box. Instead, they'd been weaponizing our court system to stop us deporting illegal immigrants. They'd been using the administrative state to make sure that conservative policies are thwarted. And they've been pushing their woke agenda through our schools, through our campuses, and even in our corporations. Now, I thought that companies in the free market were meant to be about giving people jobs, giving people opportunities, making money, making profits, creating wealth for our country. But no, we've got a new kind of economics now in the West. It's called Wokeonomics. Well, there we are. That was Liz Truss speaking on the main stage just a few moments ago. In fact, I'm rather impressed we managed to get the clip up as quickly as that. Now, when I first came to CPAC and spoke in 2012, I wasn't just the only Brit here, I was the only foreigner here. And I came back again in 2013 and I was completely alone. And now we have people here. In fact, the Argentinian uh, newly elected president will be here on Saturday. We've got people coming to CPAC from all over the world, including former British Prime Minister Liz Truss. Hot foot off the stage. How was it? Great. Fantastic. Lots of conservative energy. And isn't that the thing? You know, as I say, I've been coming to this regularly, year after year, and I've been to CPACs in Australia and elsewhere. There's something the conservative movement in America has, grassroots, going all the way up, that's just missing in Britain completely. Well, we are developing that with PopCon. That's what PopCon is all about. It is about conservative policies and getting grassroots support, because I know that's what the public wants. They want us to deal with immigration. They want us to cut regulation. They want to have low taxes. Yep. But too often, there's a circle within the M25 that stop that from happening. And that is why we need to galvanize those supporters and get that conservative energy. Do you think the British Conservative movement could ever produce anything like this in terms of its energy? Of course. Of course. Of course. I think we saw some of that at the PopCon launch that we had recently, but we need more of it and we need more people to get involved. And that's what I'm here talking about. I'm also uh, talking about my new book, I know. 10 we're Years come, to we're Save gonna, the West, we're gonna come which to is that. coming no, we're gonna out come very to that. soon. Don't worry, we're going to come to that. And is it interesting, what you see here are people with quite similar visions for the way they want their countries to be run, for the way they see the world, uh, operating, cooperating together. I mean, this is genuinely international now, isn't it? Yes, because this is what every human being wants. Margaret Thatcher says when people are free to choose, they choose freedom. And it's so true. People want control of their own lives. They don't want the government telling them what to do. They don't want these woke policies inflicted on them. But the problem is the leftist activists have been very, very assiduous at pushing that agenda, which is why we need a conservative movement that challenges that at yeah. a grassroots level. I mean, one of the things that you've said again and again is that you were shocked as prime minister how difficult it was to get your agenda through. That some, I mean, here they call it the deep state. Um, I don't know what you'd call it back at home. But, I call it the quangocracy. Yeah. You know, we've got more than 500 quangos in Britain, and they've got more and more powerful politicians have outsourced the decisions to them. So if you try and make those decisions, you get the most almighty backlash. And that's what I faced. Have we also outsourced a lot of decisions to judges? You know, Parliament seems to be able to make laws, and judges relying on international agreements overruling Parliament. Is that something else that we need to look at? Absolutely. I mean, I made the comment in my speech that we now have the legal system interfering in questions over deporting illegal migrants. Yeah. I think that's a huge problem. Everybody I speak to on the doorstep in Norfolk wants us to deal with illegal immigration. And yet, the government has been unable to do that because of the courts. And this goes way back to Tony Blair and the Constitutional Reform Act, yeah. where he created the Supreme Court.
we never had that in the British system. We'd always had a Lord Chancellor, democratically accountable, sitting in Cabinet. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, he did huge constitutional damage, but it's going to take a lot to reverse it. Now, Liz, you know, we know with Popcorn, we know your feelings about the UK, but you're becoming a, or trying to become a global crusader with this new book. And we're going to put the cover of the book up for viewers to see. So, 10 years to save the West. What does that mean? But what I feel is if we allow these leftist policies to dominate, what I said today is the free world has been run by the left. We've got Joe Biden in the White House, Emmanuel Macron, we've got Justin Trudeau, and they have pursued policies that have weakened the West. You know, we've seen the rise of China, we've seen the appalling war in Ukraine perpetrated by Russia. Iran is almost at the point of getting a nuclear weapon. And that's why we need conservative leadership again. That's why we need a Republican back in the White House. But we also need to win the argument. You know, we know what's going on in our schools, on our campuses. The appalling events yesterday in Parliament yeah. you know, with people being threatened by anti-Semites. Yeah. You know, how on earth has this happened? That's why we need to fight. And conservatives need to fight. Otherwise, I really fear the West will be lost. I have to say what happened yesterday was appalling. And I, you know, I didn't realise till this morning that, you know, from the river to the sea, Palestine shall be free, was projected onto Big Ben last night. And the police have decided to take no further action. So this also applies to the police. If you're going to have laws, you actually have to enforce them, don't you? Absolutely. And the police have not done enough. I'm also very fearful about MP security. You know, we've seen two MPs murdered in the last 10 years. We need people to come forward. We need parliamentarians to be able to speak truth. And yet they're being threatened and they're being bullied. And I want to see a step up of security for MPs. I think what has happened has been appalling. Yeah, I mean, fear was stalking the House of Commons yesterday, wasn't it? In terms of what people were saying, in terms of the judgments the Speaker made. Uh, do you think the Speaker can survive this? Well, look, I think I support the Speaker. I want the Speaker to continue. I think you he's do. basically done a good job. But we need to change the security of MPs. This is not about the Speaker for me. It's about the fact that we are allowing our democracy to be eroded. And I talked earlier about the quangocracy and yeah. the judiciary and the fact that decisions are being taken out of the hands of politicians. I think that's wrong. But it's also wrong that members of Parliament should be intimidated. And you, that's very the wrong. police need to step yeah, up their very, efforts. Very wrong. Now, when you ask British Conservatives in a senior position who they want to win the US presidential election, they never give an answer. But I, I almost think half of the leading Conservatives would rather Joe Biden got back than Donald Trump. How do you feel about Donald Trump? Well, I feel that Joe Biden needs to be kicked out of the White House. Yeah. I think that is vital for the future of the West. And I have worked in the Cabinet under both the Trump presidency as Trade yep. Secretary and the Biden Secretary as for Biden as foreign, when yep. I was Foreign Secretary. And I'll tell you, I felt safer for the West when President Trump was in power. There you are, a British Conservative saying nice things about President Trump. And you're right, he actually does stand up for genuine Conservative values and he likes our country. And I always think Biden rather loathes us. No, he, Biden seems to be very keen to criticise the United Kingdom. And that's certainly what I found as both Foreign Secretary and Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. So Liz, 10 years to save the West. This is now, this is the crusade for the rest of your political career, yeah? Yes. And are you going to take that out around where, I mean, is it just America and Britain? Do you intend to roll this so out? So I'm, I'm hoping to take it to Japan as well and yep. many of our allies around the world because we need everybody in this fight. You know, there is now an authoritarian axis. China, Iran, Russia. They are determined to undermine our way of life and our values. And we have to fight back. And that's why we need conservatives in, across the free world fighting together. And that's why I'm here today. Liz Trust, thank you for thank joining you. me. Well, I'm going to read the book.